Let's talk a little bit about what holds us women back. What would you say is that the case? What would be your, your thinking? Mm -hmm. Women thing now? Nobody's talking? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Maybe I can start. So I think for me it is, it is definitely like uncertainty. So I'm super shy about whether I can make something. I always question myself. Um, also like before applying somewhere I'm like, oh my god, can I even make it? Am I good enough? But yeah, I think the, the most important thing is that we just believe in ourselves, have confidence to just do something and just try it. Um, because if I had never applied to manage more, I wouldn't be in here. Um, but yeah, my friends kind of gave me the confidence to, to apply and yeah, I got in. So I think we shouldn't hold ourselves back, but just go out there and try. I think that's a very fair point. I feel also like a little bit of overthinking. Yeah. Like whenever I, I do something, I'm like, oh God, are people going to see it wrong or something? Yeah. yeah. And I think it's not about being female uh, because we don't really think oh, I'm a woman, I'm going to apply there. But we um, intrinsically don't have this like jump right away if we don't really um, perceive that we can just learn on the go because the field is like mainly dominated, dominated with more male uh, role models. So we don't see enough uh, power in, inside of us. But it's actually just about daring. That's the that scope that we have. We, we just have to challenge and jump in there. Because it's not about not having, it's just we don't have experience enough to to be out there, maybe. Yeah, I also think so. Like, um, you don't believe in yourself enough and like the default is always male, so you feel like you don't belong in certain spaces and that's why you don't even try. And I think, I mean, that goes along with what exactly. you guys said. And we have different strengths um, by our nature sometimes. Um, I don't know, maybe I'm really good at team building, not in... Um, uh, strategy and tech for example uh, but this is also an asset but if it's not valued in uh, in an environment then I don't want to stand up and say hey I'm actually good at team building for example but we should just uh, I believe um, empower what we have yeah I also think it's super important to, t to just believe in our strengths and to show that we have them yeah. and not think oh someone else might be even better at it but to just go out there and show Hey, I can do this, I can do that. Yeah, perfect. Welcome back to Meetings Unique, my friends. I'm so, so happy to bring you another episode with this time support from Manage More. <laughs> I'm here with uh, some of the incredible women we have in Generation 38. So thank you so much, Almira, Lotti, and Harsha, for being here today. Thank you for having <laughs> us. <yeah. laughs> so, for our audience who may not know you, maybe you can say one, two sentences about yourselves and then you can start right into the conversation. Sure. Uh, I'm Almira. I'm uh, from uh, Management and Technology Masters from TUM. And I started uh, Manager More last semester. I'm from G38 as all of the girls here. <laughs> and um, I'm right now working on my startup project in a biotech field and I'm happy to be here. Um, I'm Lotti, I'm same generation, also a Master in Management and Technology. I did my undergrad in Cultural Studies, so something very different, but I've worked in a startup and that's how I came into the startup ecosystem in Munich. Yeah, and I'm Hersha, and I study Master in Sustainable Resource Management, which is a bit <laughs> off, <laughs> but the coolest topic, so <laughs> highly, highly recommend people joining it. Um, and I also joined last year with everyone else. Um, yeah, that's all. Awesome. So we have even diverse backgrounds. That's, that's mm -hmm. terrific. <laughs> <laughs> even not even designed. Um, so let's start off a little bit with the question, why did you guys or girls here apply to manage more? I think for me, so I had a failed startup, let's say, sort of, um, at the beginning of last year. And when there was a whole metaverse happening and the Web3 era, let's say, which failed, um, and since then I felt that there were some skills that came very naturally to me, like team building or there were skills that I wanted to build further about what the startup looks like because I think learning about how to build a startup gives you so much more than just, you know, making a lot of money. It's not just about making money, it's so much more in terms of what you can now imagine of creating and 
that was the power that I was looking and that was my intention why I wanted to join Managing More that I want to learn methodically of how innovation really happens and what is in there and how do, you, do people come up with stuff like how is that systematically done and I was always always curious about Managing More like since the time I even came from India so I knew about it and I was like okay this could be cool and finally I had some time I applied for it luckily I got in so pretty it has been a very cool journey but that's that's why I more or less applied it's so fun I like that <laughs> can I go? you go <laughs> Um, actually, I, I was doing like last year, one year and a half uh, ago, I was doing a course called eLab where I met a lot of manager and more uh, students. And there, back in the time, I was like trying to build my own startup in more psychology field, but I had literally no idea what, how I'm going to do like design thinking. Of course, I know, but like very basic introduction level. And the most important thing, I didn't have the confidence, like even though I find the right contacts to, that can actually help me, I didn't have the confidence to like go and talk to them. And some friends that I met uh, through this course, they were like, why don't you do it? Just do it, you know? And even though it sounds very simple, this friend uh, really took the time like for one hour and I know uh, he had a busy schedule. He was just like giving feedback on my pitch deck and I was like, oh, that, that's really like valuable. Thank you so much for being there for me. And he actually um, told me, hey, manager Moore is uh, going English. You should definitely give it a try. Like, I think you would love it here. And I, I, I always felt like a little bit like I, I'm not that I'm not there yet. And uh, when I was doing the application, I really hesitated because I said, if only the application gives me a lot of stress, how am I going to manage yeah. whatever comes next? <laughs> and then, like again, people around me, people who I was applying together with right now, for example, Tiago, also from our generation, they were always motivating me. No, like just think what you can do best. And there, I really figured out to be proud of what I can do best. It's not like fitting into some roles, but um, I, I believe the reason I ended up in Manage and More was mainly the community. Uh, that helped me to build the confidence that I am standing here right now talking out loud what I can do and I cannot do mm. willing to improve and stuff like this so that would be my perspective <laughs> yeah. nice. but I have not had a startup yet um, but I've worked in one as I said and I really enjoyed it and I'm very interested in like societal topics issues and I feel like there's a lot of innovation to be done there I feel like when you think of innovation you always think of technology which is also important but there are also like societal issues you have to think about and for me it was like I wanted to get into an environment that would inspire me with like-minded people who want to drive forward innovation and that's kind of why I became interested in managing more and I've met a lot of managing more or before who I really like got along with well. Mm -hmm. They were super nice. I really like working together with them. Actually I met Amina before in the course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I guess that's my reason for applying. And also of course like the confidence part really resonated with me. Because I, I knew like the personal growth I needed that and I was like okay if I'm gonna find it there I'll try. <laughs> yeah. Yeah I like this is a whole topic on the societal impact and like thinking about sustainability and the direction everything is going on and you know like the only way forward is through innovation I think that that really resonated like if you don't think of innovation now then when because there's no like you know set roles anymore like this is a job that you have to do sort mm -hmm. of thing like, like you find your way and you find your way when you have tools like design thinking naturally like you learn more about yourself and you also learn about what you want to do in the world and or I really believe that's the most powerful tool that I have gotten yet, like from the mm -hmm. whole process of being here. Yeah. Um, and you meet the people who are like amazing. Amazing. <laughs> <It's nice. laughs> yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I really like your point with societal innovation because that was actually one of the main reasons why I started the channel actually. Oh. Um, because um, like my um, boyfriend. Like whole his whole ecosystem is all into psychology, mm -hmm. therapy, like social work, 
and and it's like very foreign. Like I was talking to people there, and they're like, oh, there are like these programs, and you can do, and they're like entrepreneurially thinking, but mm. they don't label it entrepreneurship yeah. Yeah. or like these methods. Yeah, and it's like I would never fit in there, and I was like, no, like this, we need these yeah, kind of relations as well, yeah. Yeah. and maybe people are more encouraged, you know, if they're like, hey, these people are likable and and they know like, approachable, <laughs> yeah. and not like everybody like in their little ivory tower or something. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's actually yeah, and I think it's exactly the combination of those different skills and different people that is so valuable because like technology is nice and like psychology is nice, but if you combine it, it's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. And like I always come back to like my time with the NGO that I worked for. Like I keep talking about it. Yeah. But that was like where I saw real innovation happening. Like you, how do you think of a ten-year program for a child who's in an underprivileged home? and you design the whole thing around that child and that's the thing like you have the customer's need at the center of your innovation yeah. you know like but to make those connections you need to first yeah. have an experience come back and study something practice it and then learn okay oh my god all of these make sense mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and i think i talked with that actually also with freddy and so you can check that <laughs> as well um that i mean yes. entrepreneurship means not not only you know like building companies which yeah. we're doing that's mm -hmm. insane but I mean the little project um, I'm doing also has like a customer you know and it's like yeah. that iterating project I mean this is like a very stupid like small example but still like it can be just finding a problem in your in your field and and just doing something right it can be something super small and I think that thinking yeah. is something you you then see the problems and you're like okay how can I solve this. And I think yeah. that's so transformative because you actually do something about it. Um, exactly. And one thing that I loved when we first uh, met in Gachenbach with everybody from our generation, everybody was like um, met under the roof of impact, having an impact, changing what we have right now, this inequality, unsustainable solutions are around. And everybody was like, yeah, totally. And everybody actually came up with these words in their yeah. own groups. And I really loved to be in this because if I have something going bad, everybody is trying to inspire me in a way that also changed um, how I see it right now. It's not just like you say, it's not even like somewhere there is a problem. If I have a problem, it's, it's, it's very inspiring if you just like, because Lotti tells me something else, you tell me something totally different, Harsha supports me in another way and we are just like covered by, uh, by many aspects I feel like. That, that's exactly what I meant with confidence and because it's everywhere how, how you can influence people, impact in a positive manner. So, yeah, I love that our generation is like, I don't know, very focused on having this, um, this change. And when you said transformative, it's like really in our, um, in our souls somehow, yeah. I feel yeah. like. I think that's the point that we connected very well, like when we were also writing a mission and vision statement yeah. in some sense, like it was all there, like all the different elements of like thinking about sustainability, thinking about impact, social impacts and everything. So there was like this bigger purpose and we didn't come up with the only mm -hmm. wish that, okay, no, everyone is here to make their own companies. Mm -hmm. And like, other, like in the past, I think entrepreneurship has always been seen more as like an individualistic profession. Yeah. And managing more changes that like if you are building a startup or if like let's say Almira is working on something everyone there is there for you like no matter what you know and that is a great community to have rather than people pulling your leg and say oh no she's doing it so I need to be like there's not a competition it's collaboration yeah. that's the classic difference between yeah. both and I absolutely love that like and and it helps you like to think of innovation it, it knows it creates a physically like safe space for all of us to grow and nurture ourselves and we can make mistakes we could stand in front of a like a board and like you know i don't know make all sort of blunder like all sorts of blunder like you know how you say like you always have to fail forward and not fail backwards and this is a place where you can fail forward like keep failing forward and you know you'll get somewhere so yeah. i really love that about us <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe it's getting too long, but I just want to add one more thing. <laughs> because uh, Harsha and I, with Niels, we were in the same team in our boot camp, yeah. and we had to present. And I was having like a really like a getting very nervous about uh, doing the pitch in front of everybody, even though it's just our generation. And I said like I'm bad at this, and Harsha and Niels said then you should definitely do it. 
And I was like, no, guys, like, I really don't want to. <laughs> and then they were like training me. And, and both of them, they were just like pushing me to that, that you can do it. And they were there for me. And for example, Neil sees, you know, he's very easy going with everybody. He can just pitch literally anything. And he didn't say, okay, no worries, I'll do that because yeah. I'm really good at it already. So I think this support is something very, uh, that, that makes the impact on people. Definitely. I know you pitch a lot. So, <laughs> so, so successfully. Yeah. So. <laughs> That's how it started, so. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah, amazing. She just won the um, start and spread competition. Yes. <laughs> and MIT also, so I mean, yeah. yeah. She's, yeah. Doing, she's doing great stuff. <laughs> Okay, terrific. All right, um, so we heard a lot about the community and our generation and everything, and I think you really got the message on what makes this wholesome and unique, and I can really attest to all these things, especially like the, I don't know, the part where you support each other and I think cheer for each other, and I think that's what makes the difference, because if we focus on competing with each other, it's not going to get you anywhere anyway, so I think that's really nice. And we talked a little bit about why we applied and everything. So what I'm wondering also is like, did you have any hesitations about applying? I think you talked a little bit about mm -hmm. this, Mira. But I think, you know, sometimes as women, we are like a bit hesitant. So I don't know, did that happen for you? Mm, not really. Um, I was always hesitant. Like, I think that was just so intrinsically me. I never related it to the fact that I was a woman. But then I also, the more I talked, I realized that this is something that most of the women face and which generally my male partner won't face. Yeah. But that was not, so there was a hesitation, but I never tagged it to being a woman initially yeah. ahead of applying. But I realized, no, it does come from something that's so ingrained and that is something like, okay, I see colleagues, like my male colleagues doing much better than me, or like standing up, doing a presentation going ahead with an application, getting an input, like it just flows for them. And here I'm sitting in my room, hesitating, okay, should I hit that enter button? Ha did I write it right? Or get a feedback from at least five people just to get the validation, like, okay, no, this is good enough and you can send it ahead. Um, and that has always been the case. So it's not just about the application today. It was al also the case, as I said, about my failed startup in a way, like, okay, I never took the stage throughout the six months, even if I was doing the back work. I always pushed my male colleague, my this, like, okay, no, you go to do the presentation because, or in every conversation, I knew that maybe I would have been a better suited to the conversation. I could understand what was happening in a call with the investor, let's say, but I didn't have the courage to stand up and say that maybe we should go this way or that way. So yes, intrinsically, there is a lot of hesitation um but talking to this wonderful batch of ladies here um that is changing quite a bit and now that has changed like at least a notch less so i don't hesitate as much as i did before that's so nice to mm -hmm. ladies sound so sophisticated <laughs> it's like oh oh, oh well how yeah. about you Lottie? yeah for me, I guess I, right now I'm at a point where I at least apply, I don't hesitate about applying, but the point afterwards I'm like, oh shit, you gotta <laughs> you have to talk to people yeah. and defend verbally while you're supposed to be part of like the group. Yeah. And I think for me that was more like very, well, it made me very nervous. And also then getting into the program and like knowing you will meet those like nice, very uh, skilled people and you kind of have to present yourself, I don't know, in a way that like other people will also think that you are skilled, I don't know. Yeah, you're credible in a way. Yeah, yeah. I feel like right now you know on paper that you're good enough, Yeah. yeah. but like but when it comes to defending why you're good enough, I feel like that's more the yeah. issue, I, I don't agree. know. And like right now I'm like I have really have the mentality to I just try to apply wherever and if I want to do it I'm going to apply but for me the stress comes afterwards. <laughs> that's yeah. fair. I think I didn't have it, to be honest, but I think, I don't know if that's a good thing. <laughs> uh, I, I believe I'm very um, shaped because I've always been in all guys, almost, environments, like since I can remember, <laughs> pretty much. And, 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 and I was kind of the straight A student who got a lot of backlash for that, and then just you, you needed to kind of, I don't know, 
and the kind of male behavior you saw from people just going for it, she just kind of adopted it at some point because I feel like what I realized, and a lot of actually the stories when I was at Barclays, we had like these highlights from people in very high positions, and a lot of the women were like saying, you know, and um, somebody asked me to do it or somebody helped me along the way. Mm -hmm. And a lot of guys were like, yeah, I just applied and I did it and I don't know. Mm -hmm. And I saw the difference and I was like, hey, great if there are people who are championing for you and are putting your name in the conversation, but I feel like you can't depend on that. If that happens, then that's terrific. But I feel yeah. like you have your best interest at heart and you know what you can do. Yeah. And, and to put yourself out there, like, it's great if other people do it, but at the end of the day, it's like, that's what I think, my responsibility mm -hmm. to put myself out there. Yeah. And, you know, like, we're saying, like, I don't know, they don't like me. That's okay. Like, I've been not liked by a lot of people, and that's totally fine because, mm -hmm. I don't know, we have this desire, obviously, to be liked, which yeah. is natural, but not by everybody, I don't know. So I didn't really have that hesitation, but I can understand what comes from. I totally agree with you, but I, I, I really think there's, like, a threshold, yeah. and once you're over that, you don't even like hesitate, you're just mm -hmm. going for it. Yeah. And sometimes the threshold is just for the application, sometimes it's just for the small talk because I like slowly jumped all over in that. <laughs> <laughs> because just like Loti said, like, uh, yeah, I'm in now, but now I have to, how I felt, now I have to prove myself that I actually made it and, you yeah. know, like I, I gained my place. And this is just like a shout out to all the women out there. It's just like one time thing. If you just like jump out, out of this threshold, then it comes automatically in a way because you see that you can do it and you don't need somebody to tell you that you can do it. It's just like to burn the fire and then it, it keeps shining all the time, I believe. Yeah, and do you know that you say that? I feel like here is the, the best place almost because when I came I was late I didn't get the first part of the mm. experience which I do not recommend because <laughs> you yeah. don't see the whole uh, beginning part um, but I was very nervous at that point because I was like oh these people uh, they all know each other and I'm like the last person to arrive and, and there was more the phase where I thought I had to prove myself that's why mm -hmm. I also pitched yeah. because I thought okay you know I'm trying to so, prove yeah. that I'm <laughs> involved and I didn't miss it because I didn't want to go or something yeah um, yeah, so I get that feeling. Uh, I think yeah. But I, what I, what when I arrived, everybody was so welcoming. Yeah, we were waiting for you. Like, <laughs> oh, like finally a picture with everyone. <laughs> yeah, that took a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's very busy. But no, yeah, okay, cool. All right, next question. Yes. Yeah. Good for go. good. Okay. All right, so let's talk a little bit about how has Manager More been so far. I mean, we all joined kind of last August, so maybe everybody can say a little bit about what surprised them about their Manager More journey. Mm -hmm. I can start. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I surprised myself a lot <laughs> because I really um, developed a lot of skills that I saw from other people around me because I as I told, it was like, basically for me, it's personal development in many aspects. Like, for example, if I would like to tell a story, my mind would go like 10 million different paths and I wouldn't be able to pick the right, like one path that you can follow what I'm talking about and I would be all over the place. And then I saw people were like, I have three points to make, like one, two, three. Mm -hmm. I'm like, how? how, how do you know like where the path is going, for example? And this kind of things really changed in me and then I started to feel like I'm talking on the same page with everybody. And this was like, uh, I didn't know I could do it, I just thought I have a, like different connections in my brain, you know. It, but it's just at the end, developing a skill, it can be with anything. If you are impatient, you can learn that. And this environment really taught me that. And I was really surprised how much I can achieve and I think that that's a great thing to be somewhere and trust yourself because how much ever course you take because I knew this I also did some courses like um, entrepreneurship through a gender lens I saw like how females uh, women in entrepreneurship like struggle in different aspects but yeah like and then what's the solution yeah of course there are some uh, recommendations but I experienced all, all of that in Manage and More uh, as an entrepreneur getting into this field I think um, 
yeah, again, it comes back to what Manager More brought me and how it um, benefited, how I benefited from that. But this really surprised me because I just thought this would be another education that I would learn more. Yeah. But I didn't think it would change me. Yeah. So that that was really surprising for me. For me, it's similar. I feel like kind of what people told me what Manager More would be, I was like, yeah, I mean, sounds nice, but let's see if it's really <laughs> like this. And it really worked. So it's always like trust the process and yeah. the process actually works. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was also a lot like, first of all, the community that you get really close with people, but then also personal growth. Um, no, I forgot what I wanted to say. We can circle back to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like I could. Well. Yeah. Um, so for me, I think my biggest learning point Natural. So surprisingly, I was in a team for my deep dive with all men. Also from our partner side, like it was literally all men. Same. <laughs> Apart from me and Lisa, and Lisa was like our coach, so she was not there all the time. And that's when I felt that yes, there is something there happening where I was always putting that extra force or the pressure or taking the extra pressure. Like I was really struggling. There were times where I was like okay, no, I'm, I'm unable to perform, like, in, um, before our final presentation. So I always felt like my presentation skills are not good enough. So I can't speak in front of people. Um, I always felt that I don't have the right words, etc., etc. et cetera. Um, but honestly, I did the final presentation. Um, I was extremely nervous um, right in the morning. I was still nervous on the train since we had to go from here to Nuremberg. But no one really noticed when I did the presentation. Everyone was like, you were amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, are you sure? <laughs> That's what you meant. And I wasn't sure because I naturally felt like, no, like someone else could have done it, the slides better or could have done the analysis better or could have done, I don't know, did some more interviews or could have synthesized it better. But for me to trust my guts at that point and be like, no, I could also do it. And it's okay. Like, it went fine. Like, it was me taking that extra 10% of the stress that I knew n my rest of my colleagues were not taking it. Mm -hmm. So, I'm sitting in that room, like, it was a huge conference room where you are, like, standing in front of six men and, like, okay, now listen to me for the next 15 minutes, <laughs> I'm going to speak. Um, but that gave me a lot of um, self-motivation in terms of how I hold my space in a conference room or how I, how I hold space in a conversation at my office or anywhere like moving on like also that somehow changed my relationship like my personal relationship with my dad like we come from a patriarchal society like I naturally come from a very more back patriarchal society yeah. so but all these experiences make me bold enough to speak up and also like put tell my mom in a way like okay no you can also speak up and also ask my brother to be a bit more kinder or like you know like you pass on those values to people around you like I have a friend who's like okay she has a um, friend or a colleague who's not treating her well and then you tell her like this is not right and because we naturally feel like no this is okay like we're gonna be past it and it's fine mm -hmm. that's not fair yeah Thanks, Sasha, for inspiring me, and I remember what I wanted to go for it. <laughs> it's actually like the taking up space and building confidence to be somewhere. First of all, I feel like I also belong in the like startup ecosystem now. And for instance, I've applied for a job in a startup where I wasn't sure if I'm skilled enough or good enough, but I got, to, got the job and I am good enough for the job. And I Ooh. feel like also <laughs> like building, like having boundaries and being confident with your boundaries because before I was always like avoiding conflict at any cost, doing mm. so much more so people would, wouldn't have anything to... Against you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So there wouldn't be anything they yeah. would have to feedback you negatively kind yeah. of. But right now I'm like, I'm, I'm going to do this much and if that's not enough, then I get, get some constructive feedback and work on it. But I feel like, like drawing these boundaries for me that's a huge su success and I feel like that came through management more and practicing yeah. and being also in a like very supporting surrounding where you can try those things and also like trying like feedback where you know it's constructive and not like just kind of negative yeah so, yeah. yeah and add, adding on to that because of this feedback thing uh, I had an amazing business design deep dive team but just as as the same as you are um, uh, four other guys, uh, also a partner, and they were literally amazing. Mm -hmm. But uh, at the end, we uh, wanted to do this feedback session, 
and I got super nervous and I don't even know why like I was about to cry and I don't even know what they're gonna tell me I was preparing my feedback but I got like extremely nervous like what are they gonna say because all I could think of that like the things I did wrong maybe I and my brain started the negative loop you know started self-criticizing myself and I was like calm down but I wasn't able to calm down and we did the feedback sessions and they gave me like a lot of positive feedback and encouraging like improvement points and I really expected to be destroyed <laughs> somehow yeah. even though we had an amazing time because you know we look at things from different perspectives because of different personalities as well it's not just gender um, aspect and then uh, at the end I was like okay I, I can take feedback and it's actually fine it's not just like slapping me in the face like hey you were bad at this and this you know because that's how I I, I was afraid yeah, of yeah. receiving it and I was trying yeah. to do everything smoothly yeah. if I don't I don't want to hear it because it will demotivate me somehow no I just want to say I had like the very similar feeling I mean I didn't go like 100% I, I said that my <laughs> deep dive but um I was I was with Lottie, I was like, oh it's gonna be fine with the three guys. It's like, oh god, they're gonna be so, it's gonna be so terrible. <laughs> and then, and uh, but what I really appreciated was that they were all like very um empath empathetic. Like some of them tried to understand why I was doing the things I was doing or like I don't know, not just saying like you didn't show up but like oh we missed you or it would be nicer if you give your input. Like it was a a very constructive way mm -hmm. and then I, I knew they were right, but I didn't feel so attacked or like so like I, I can't speak up more. I don't know. And yeah. this, this this helped me to, yeah. to trust the team more. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to say something like about the problem because mm -hmm. I feel like especially when you're like a woman or someone who's different than the in-group, yeah. you're always afraid that you're the example and you're the bad example. So <laughs> you want to avoid yeah. like not doing your job perfectly at any cost. Because I feel like if I fuck up those people are gonna think all oh, women are shit. Yeah. And I really wanna avoid that. And I feel like. Yeah, There's a lot of pressure to handle. Yeah. It was a learning journey to get to like yeah, a point exactly. where I'm like, okay, maybe I'm not gonna do something perfectly, but that's also fine because everybody yeah. needs some time yeah. sometimes. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Like the point that you said about like bringing on an opinion or a perspective which is kind of different from the rest. Mm -hmm. And I always felt I was the one like speaking way too like let's say not into the realms like also coming from the background that i come from i was like okay no like we want to be more fair to mm. the people we want to make sure that we are thinking about the social aspect of this um, project etc etc and wonderfully all my colleagues like really appreciated it like the perspective that i brought i always felt like no maybe this doesn't make a lot of sense or i should have framed it better in my head or brought up some more data or something but that wasn't the case. Like every time I got all the support from my mm. team, so I'm really kudos to my team, and I can count. Like not every man are bad. Like you know, <laughs> they're not bad people. It's just uh, it's just a thing in this society. Like, we can't help it. But things are changing as well. So I really appreciated my team as well. Like in terms of the feedback, in terms of how considerate they were, um, in terms of like me not me living in rising or like, you know, having our meetings in pricing at times or making sure we have thrice in a week. Like all these small adjustments which you maybe I felt initially no one would do for me, yeah. they didn't do it. Like once yeah. you ask for it, people do it for you. Exactly. So for me, that was also very empowering. Like I did not have a bad experience. It was just <laughs> something yeah. that is not the norm. So you feel it would be bad. Yeah. And I think um, to kind of close this yeah. a little bit, um, off as well. I, I remember when I was um, leading like a project team and we had like a, a guy and a girl and, and there was just this massive miscommunication going on actually and I think that's where, um, you know, I think it's so important and I think when I talked with Freddie I was like saying that that's what I like about our community that everybody's so open and self-reflective and, yeah. and willing to talk the things through as well and if there is like a prejudice or whatever yeah. or you know a bias which you have at the beginning like I think it can be solved and I think mm. that that's what brings us closer what you said like not all men are bad not all yeah. men are, you know like it's yeah, not yeah. Like, it's not going to get us anywhere to think in these um, clusters anyway so and and and, and to to go back to the first question uh, which was what surprised us um uh, to kind of 
put the perspective. I was not sure, so what I wanted to join at Manager More was kind of to find out if I want to be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. okay. And I'm still not sure, <laughs> but, but I'm going towards like side hustles or like mm. side projects which are a bit entrepreneurial and I think it surprised me that I feel now confident to do them. So mm -hmm. it gave me more, yeah, more than I thought it would. Yeah, you're revolutionizing. No. Matt is Munich. All right. So I loved all our conversations. Um, as you can see, we could talk a long time here. Um, but kind of to finish this wonderful video off, um, what would be, what would you say? How can we empower other women? Um, how I would see it is um, from because there is like a privileged side to this story. So if I'm sitting in a room full of like 90 men and 10 women. Uh, I don't want to be the, on, always the person who's asking something about inequality, like do you have a framework for female, in, uh, female startups uh, to create an unbiased evaluation process because we are apparently like the minority here. And if I ask the question, then I ask it because I'm a woman, but if, I, if a, um, a, par a male partner, a male fellow asks this question, then it brings more in, in inspiration for other men to actually take a step back and say, hey, yeah, why don't we have it? Because if you're already in a privileged status, you don't challenge the status because you're already there and you don't see it as the other people see. So I, I just shout out to all um, men who are applying and maybe just spread the world, uh, word and um, try empowering the women around you or if you see a strong male figure don't hesitate to ask a question, don't be scared to ask a question about what do they think about um, having 20% of females being entrepreneurs in Germany for example. So just I think this change will um, happen when we just like hold hands and collaborate together otherwise if we just uh, throw an event of a uh, female startup, for example, only like a closed event, then we are, we are just going to play with each other. Yeah. But it should be like around the world, like together with everybody. So that's how I see it. I agree. For me, it's again the in-group that I mentioned before. I feel like when you know that you are the in-group, so maybe you're in a male space and it's mostly men, or like your background or sexual orientation or whatever, when you know you're the in-group, really make sure yet that you invite people into this in-group, mm -hmm. because from the outside it doesn't look like you can be part of it. Yeah. But once, like if you like actively approach someone, and I like, you're super cool, I like you, come to manage more, or like, I feel like it makes such a difference because that's actually how it was for me. It was a guy from Edge and Moore who approached me and he was like, you're so nice, like, we work together very well, you would fit, fit in perfectly into the community, why don't you apply? And I was like, okay, if he says it, maybe I'm <laughs> <laughs> so I think, yeah. yeah, really be aware of your privileges and make sure you invite other people into your privilege mm -hmm. fears. Yeah. Yeah. I think for me, I think, I mean, how do we empower women? <laughs> That's a hard question, actually. I don't have a playbook to say that this is how um, we should empower women. I would just say to all the women out there that trust your guts, <laughs> you got it. Yeah. Um, apply, don't give it a second thought. And if you ever feel hesitant, talk to someone next to you. They would have gone through the same experience and that would give you the motivation to move forward. So really, really trust your guts. <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and kind of to close this off, I think uh, my perspective would be also that we as women champion each other and I think that's what you can also see through our conversations and if you see something which has been done great, like I tell everybody about your yeah. things and about Lottie and about Harjit because everybody's doing so much and I think if we as women also, and I think this is what I love about our generation as well, yeah. that there, there's so much support. And that hasn't always been the case, but I think that's how we help each other. You know, if there's if there's a thinking that there's just one place, one woman at the table, you may be a bit more competitive. But if it's like, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's how we can empower. And so definitely apply until <laughs> yes. this Sunday if you want to be part of Manager More. Thanks so yeah. much. Girls. Thank you so Thank much. You. <laughs>